So um, today we're talking about biometric slashing mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, Shannon, it's it might be the, the thing where um, Humano's idea originated. You know, because before Does talking it... about in, in, yeah, because in the sense before talking about um, biometric, you know, slashing mechanism and how it works. We should probably talk about um, why is biometric blacklisting a thing and um, how it would affect if, you know, um, some systems were, were built with identity and networks that have incorporated um, some kind of biometric blacklisting. Um, can, 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 can you think about any um, examples of biometric blacklisting that already exists? I mean, what can you think of? Biometric blacklisting that already exists. Um, I mean, well, um, I, I, I mean, I, I guess, you know, um, go for a more traditional one, you know, if you committed a crime and your fingerprints are in the database and <laughs> your fingerprints come out as a uh, somebody who has committed a crime, I guess, in a sense, you're blacklisted. Yeah, there's the most common um, biometric black blacklisting, I think, that exists in the world. But um, um, the question is really, um, how, how can a system be built on um, laws that incorporate biometric uh, blacklisting if um, there are basically artifacts, you know, we call artifacts the things that can emulate um, some biometric template, like a, a silicon mask that tries to imitate your face. So basically, um, if we, we're living in, in, in a place where we can uh, artificially create um, artifacts that can like be, for example, fingerprints that are not yours, Shannon, I, I could like take your fingerprints and in incriminate you by um, artificially adding them to my murder weapon or something, right? Hmm. So, yeah. so um, biometric blacklisting in a, in a place where uh, biometric identities can be artificially procreated um, it does make a lot of sense to me. And, uh, and uh, um, uh, the way try, people try to emulate biometric uh, templates to try and, you know, bypass the security of various services is a very, like, uh, disruptive scientific field on its own. Because people really come up with a very uh, thorough ways of trying to emulate uh, human existence. So the question of biometric blacklisting really, really only applies to the networks that have um, proper civil resistance, because in a sense, this is the uh, you know starting point where being biometrically blacklisted kind of really matters. Because uh, well, some services or you know things that you're using in life are connected to um, your biometrics, and well, uh, in a sense limiting yourself you know and uh, your ways to authorize yourself in a um, you know the world of developing interfaces is a uh, very hard punishment uh, and um, and um, in a sense in a sense the importance arises when we definitely know for sure that if we biometrically uh, blacklist a person he definitely will not be able to uh, sign anything or reauthorize himself to a service without the system or you know some people uh, knowing that you know this is the same person because this that's his biometrics that we have already detected before something like this and i mean, yeah, and I mean your, what's your take on it well i mean i i firmly believe that there are uh different levels uh for example if we're talking about uh validators for a network 
if um, uh, and your biometrics are the stake, if you uh, mess with the system or try to fabricate things, then uh, yes, uh, you know, your stake is your biometrics. So that is something that um, should be blacklisted. And you, you don't want people uh, coming in and messing up the systems. But, you know, if you're talking about uh, biometrics for, um, let's say, uh, social media or uh, perhaps a game, um, I don't know if we um, have to be as severe or, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, um, how, how should I put it? I, I basically set it up so that we have uh, uh, different tiers. <laughs> so um, you don't necessarily need everything to be tied together, I guess. Well, you know, I was referring to uh, biometric blacklisting without, uh, you know, um, disconnected from the decentralized aspect because, um, you know, a lot of even companies or services out there uh, would definitely like to know that, for example, if they had a pro, some like malicious actor using their service and, you know, for example, marketplaces, um, you could identify the same person if he, he tried to register himself again after you have banned him from the, you know, the website, the website yeah. Yeah. or any other service or application. So, um, yeah it's disconnected from decentralization as a whole because um, biometric blacklisting in a uh, in decentralized manner on, you know, uh, network owned by nodes that are equal in terms of validation, it's a completely different uh, type of, you know, approach to um, forming the system because it has no center to verify it. Well, I mean, with, um... Uh, biometric blacklisting possible. Um, it allows, um, for example, it allows various uh, services to emerge uh, that can focus around, let's say, you know, uh, I don't know, like, you know, credit service or uh, basically uh, trying to see, you know, if, if this person is a reliable person or he, this person is uh, always messed up, always uh, commits heinous acts. So, yeah, I mean, it, the stake is definitely higher um, be, for people who uh, consciously want to uh, make trouble but it makes uh, the environment a lot safer for uh, people who are not necessarily malicious actors. So, and for me, I'm, I'm for it. <laughs> but, and that, what, what is your take on it? So talking about biometric selection mechanism, right? Um, it's a mechanism that um, tries to identify some malicious activity on the network that goes to counter, you know, some, you know, principles on which the system is based, um, you know. And um, well, basically the system has to identify uh, some, you know, persecution. And... Uh, he has to uh, blacklist the biometric template of a person who was uh, identified as a malicious actor, basically. But the thing is that um, because of the private trusted computation and the way we're trying to, um, uh, you know, pseudonymize uh, biometric identities here, um, we don't really know who the perpetrator is, but the, the system has, uh, 
grasps his biometric template. So if he tries to enroll once more, um, he won't be able to get in because his biometric template would uh, uh, be different. Or, you know, you can always <laughs> probably create a new face for yourself, go through plastic uh, surgery or something like this. But, you know. The shape and the uniqueness of the skin uh, are also a part of the module, which is used by the neural network to identify whether you're a human being or not. So probability is very, very, very low. And uh, uh, there are some recent developments in, uh, you know, um, search and matching operations for. Uh, biometric uh, templates of faces and um, the latest works done by Facetech and their test, uh, tests that they've run on various data sets. It's amazing. Um, then, but you know, can't disclose it as of now. <laughs> so um, basically you're not uh, allowed to use or uh, basically uh, sign anything on the network um for some time based on the you know level of the persecution so uh, it is uh, important to also mention that um, uh, there are some persecutions that um, work on various levels like for example if a person is just having some downtime right because Uptime is very important for the proper functioning of uh, blockchain networks and nodes should be uh, properly synced with one another. And um, yeah, um, we're, we're thinking of um, um, building the system that way so it punishes you uh, biometrically for downtimes of your node. And um, in the initial um, so white paper, we have declared that uh, it is going to be up to two weeks of uh, biometric slashing, but it does not mean that uh, the person is, um, you know, somehow um, kicked out of consensus or he loses his validator right or something else. No, he's just not able to uh, sign blocks for uh, like 14 days or so, and then he's perfectly fine. Um, but his funds are not locked out or something, nothing like this happens. But for you know more uh, devious persecutions and you know um, some uh, fraudulent fraudulent activity, there's like you know heavier penalty. Uh, it can be you know up to twenty years of biometric blacklisting for the system or something like this, or in like a lifetime blacklisting, of course. So um, yeah. And what I'm trying to say here is that as there's, there's a DAO that defines um, the black, uh, you know, biometric slashing system, and this DAO consists of equal human nodes with equal voting power and validation power, then it means the, uh, that this slashing mechanism is in the hands of the people that, you know, govern the system. And it's you know, their right to choose, you know, various levels of perpetration, and uh, choose, you know, penalty can be adjusted. So it's not something that is like hard coded into the system because it's not uh, it's not just some percentage of you know uh, of your stake, uh, like slashing mechanisms and proof of stake. It's not just you know blacklisting your mining equipment or something like this. It's it's a completely different approach, and uh, the penalty uh, is me measured in in uh, time, and basically the amount of um, commission nodes will receive for um, valuing a transaction. That was no, lost. That was lost. The fact that um, during this time, no was not validating blocks. Okay, so just just to clarify here, okay, um, obviously, you know, um, 
right here we're talking about uh biometric slashing for uh validators for for people who are for human nodes uh or human nodes um and not necessarily the uh slashing of let's say just a user who uses a wallet or something correct or are we talking about uh all users on the human node network because you know obviously uh, an average user might not necessarily be running a node. So, you know, uh, would there be different sets of uh, rules uh, or uh, different sets of, uh, how should I put it, um, requirements for somebody to be blacklisted? But you're talking about... Uh... Can you hear me? Can so, you hear me? So, so basically, um, yeah, when we're talking so, about uh, blacklisting here, we're talking about um, those who are the human nodes who have participated in our running nodes, correct? In this case, yes. But you were referring to uh, other types of solutions for centralized. For, centralized. No, for, for, for example, yeah, I mean, it, it could be that, but. Um, Let's say just uh, people who are, uh, let's say, are not governors or uh, those who are not running nodes. Yes. Yes. So um, the very um, the very the way we create like pseudonymous biometric identities is. Can be disconnected from you know the consensus and uh, what we're willing to do is to like create a, a framework where any um any you know project can incorporate into their infrastructure and use it as a pseudonymous identity layer on decentralized nodes or something like this but even the centralized services can just take the technology and, and use it for their internal uh things and for them um, biometric slashing is just uh, you know it's the question of setting the things up inside their own processes so it's not something it, it, we're designing it uh, for humanoid because it's a system that is you know has its own principles and they go based on those principles the biometric slashing mechanism is, is formed and not the other way around yeah and um uh, i actually wanted to um talk about the biggest debate that is uh, uh is it ever ongoing about this uh, question in the human out team and community is the um basically the question of uh, a locked out biometric mechanism or uh a biometric mechanism where um, penalties and blacklisted human nodes can be uh, somehow uh, reverted to whitelist through human vote. And uh, yeah, uh, there are a lot of opinions about this. And um, it's basically an issue of trust uh, and the issue of concentration of power. Um, one side is basically that um, there should be no mechanism the systems that allows to revert nodes if they have been penalized by strict um, set of uh, you know proper calculations and uh, rules. So it's not like we, we, we see that you're a malicious actor through your code and yeah, well, we've like list you or the, the this Oracle, properly shows your downtime. Sorry, pal, you're going to the back um, And uh, uh, it's really keen on um, the fact that uh, the system of biometric uh, slashing is separate from the human behavior. Because there's like, um, a, of course, there's like a DAO that 
um, defines the rules, but there's no mechanism to unpenalize the penalized. And well, uh, of course, uh, you, you can say there's like a lot of, uh, you know, um, circumstances where ordinary people that did nothing wrong can be penalized, right? And uh, there should be a mechanism that allows uh, to bring them back through some democratic vote. And that's actually like the second side and the second viewpoint. Um, basically, uh, there should be some kind of mechanism that allows to uh, bring people from the, you know, uh, the penalty and relieve them of this penalty and just uh, get them back through some voting. And um, if there is like a governing body and uh, in this governing body, there is like a dominant um, force that can like use its uh, popularity to uh, just make over the stance of various groups in this community or the governing body, that it can utilize this mechanism to uh, to its own advantage because it can unpenalize those actors of the uh, community that uh, are on its side and uh, you know a tribalism and stuff like this. So. Um, uh, this is actually the question that I wanted to ask our listeners today, and um, I'm wondering if you guys, uh, what guys, what is your opinion, basically, and um, if you could, could you please, you know, type in the chat one or like two, one representing the first idea and uh, the two representing the second idea, it would be great to see what you think. And what side are you on, Shen? Um, <clears throat> uh, I've always been on the side that says, uh, if it's, if the blacklisting happened due to an error in the code, we should be able to revert it. But uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's, about it because <laughs> i mean we don't have a uh it's not like we have a justice system here it's not like we have um uh a court where we have lawyers and attorneys and people saying that oh well you know we should be able to um you know i learned my lesson i should be able to be unbanned you know so so you right. say that it's it's like called audit verification problem yeah so i mean if it is basically something that was caused by a fault in our system then uh it would be nice to have a way to flip the switch um but if it is uh based on uh, human action or inaction um, I don't necessarily think we have the mechanism to uh, revert it because if we're trying to validate the code and we're trying to understand if something really happens um, you need the people to do that right you need, you need someone to do that look into the code to audit this and it becomes even harder because now you got multi-layered people behavior problem like this can people get to be affected by capital influence money ideology anything and uh, well and it's a position, it's a position that, that basically if you if you give this power to the people it can be well can be dominated in a governing body by one person or like the two organizations or something like this and it can be used to a huge advantage of the you know, people who control it so it's a very interesting uh, 
it's like a direct way of uh, exchange between um, your security in, in a uh, tyrannical sense, like the security of your democracy, because you know you're just opening up a, a new power source for the person who dominates this position in, in the system and. Uh, I know this is this is one of our eternal questions here, but uh, yes, we uh, we would like to hear some comments or uh, questions since nobody is uh, typing one or two here. <laughs> so uh, actually, let, let's clarify. Uh, type one in the in our chat. Um, if you feel that uh, it should kind of be hard coded, you know, where there's no reversal, and two, if uh, we should allow a way to whitelist the blacklisted. Okay, we have uh, a couple twos, and uh, there's no good option. Oh, it's interesting. You have I can explain like it if you yeah, want go ahead. more details. I mean, in general, yes, the if system is broken and someone get blacklisted that's bad and it should be reverted but when you open a way to revert it then it also op you open it to the people and there's always way to corrupt it thank you and, uh... yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the, the basically the the search for balance is key so while but, we're here, but, um, let's uh, open the floor just just for one or two questions. If anybody has any questions or comments, uh, now is your chance. And if not. Dato, please continue. <laughs> but in our first iteration, uh, although this is an ongoing debate, um, of course we have um, um, think of a way to uh, unlike whitelist the blacklist. If it's um, basically going to happen through proposal batches of the uh, governors, uh, the people who will participate in. Um, the governing can be able to um, propose uh, white lists, uh, you know, procedures, and if DAO votes uh, with absolute majority for it, uh, the batches will be whitelisted. So this is our like initial approach, but um, the approach to biometric selection is is a like an ongoing research. There's like. Um, uh, very little da data about it. So um, before creating a proper uh, approach for a decentralized system, there's a lot of research to be done. And um, I mean, um, I'm, I'm wondering if you guys, um, you know, have uh, thought of some ideas about the biometric slashing approach and maybe you've been able to uh, identify some middle ground between the ideas that we've been discussing i'm just wondering maybe um, some of you have any ideas please share well 
Well, I can always uh, go through the random pointing of fing uh, fingers and let's say uh, Silas, would you like to uh, comment here? Yeah, I guess. Uh, so I've missed a bunch of meetings, so glad to be back, the possibility to talk to you all. And uh, if I remember correctly, we already discussed a bit uh, with this situation of voting and how to how do we see the um, how do people from the side would like to see the procedure of unbanning or something like that. And I'm still sticking to the things that if a person got banned and for uh, he or he or etc i can provide evidence or that it was not him to write this list uh, uh he should be unbanned and i remember about the thing that we uh, that you guys talked uh, about the voting of unbanning someone and etc but then again that's a place where a populistic act could be done yeah a person can manipulate everybody to get on the band so i still don't have any uh good thoughts on how it could be <laughs> it's too complicated and i assume that you all guys are also in a big struggle with finding the uh golden medal something like yeah, that because this is this is like um this is not a technological problem this is a problem from political science yeah, they're like basic social engineering will play a role around here, and that's all. But how do you how do you see the procedure itself? Like, do you also see it through absolute majority voting, and or, um, you know, the vote of the masses or the vote of the some professionals that have you know, uh, uh, specific rights or trust? Yeah, yeah. That's the, the I know the, also the difference. The, the thing I would like it to be some kind of a consolation voting because like mm, well from the persons who have authority like but again it looks like a building a political structure <laughs> that is just not uh, the way it should look because if we have some a part of a majority of like assuming from Two thousands of human odds will have like one hundred uh, selected people that will be selected by voting of all the other vote, human odds, and their votes will be more powerful. You cannot clarify that those people will not change uh, reality inside the one hundred. So it's a difficult question. I, I don't know. Just if it will be a global voting. Um, well, we, we can actually talk in, in exact numbers because uh, for main network planning to amass only thousand nodes and um, grow from there. So the version one um, will include a thousand people. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, then, uh, yeah, like, I think that if a person got to, like, probably let's see 100 votes from a human node, then it could be proposed to have some more majority right in the system. Like you already uh, several meetings ago told that with time, you will not get the, um, some kind of extra bonuses, but you get some kind of a, a loyalty or how to say. It's pro uh, devotion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you get a bit of more uh, people will know you more, like the things in the community, you do something, you propose, you overweight something, mm -hmm. you like rise in that. So at least you will be uh, a known person in the community. Yeah. So mm -hmm. maybe then you can propose yourself as part of, let's call it some kind of a console. Yeah. I don't know. And if the people vote for you, then probably yes, but I think that uh, that should be a, a strict system of taking back uh, back that um, that ma major vote 
from that person that you could push the button and take it out because you never know when somebody could struggle with the system like not once per three months but except something like one per once because you know karma is a specific thing one person yeah. could book so like a send for a month and then in one day he changes to another side something yeah. like that yeah but you know this is um this is a ticking bomb problem right and mm -hmm. well at least we will know who that person is biometrically <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because in right now we don't even know who those knows are and how many real people are standing behind them. Well, but not that's about our network, but other oh. networks, I mean. Mm -hmm. But that's like basically the only thought that I have around is uh, probably should be rare, uh, how to say more aligned to the structure of the system so you will see how it fits the best because like uh, uh, thousands of nodes that's okay but in, inside you also could have some separation system and uh, go with that and see how it works maybe if when not if if i remember correctly we will have still a sec a next iteration of test network and if you have yeah. a thought that would be a great from my point of view it would be great to test out also the voting system and the correlation system if we go with a, some kind of a console see at least how it would work with those people who we have now yeah it would be not that manipulative because like nobody should yet have some kind of a word i don't know like the bonus of the testnet, it's not that big as a bonus in the the future of the voting, voting when the system mm -hmm. goes live. So here we at least can see how it works, how the, how the people are voting, how at least it can be collided with the activity of a person in the community, or maybe we'll have like selected 10 people who never were active in the ending system. So see how it at least goes. For me, that problem is like, it's waiting a lot. So it should be at least some time to be tested out to see how the human nodes are active in social and political and uh, voting stuff. Actually, our, our, some, some members of our dev team are already running uh, mm -hmm. Human node organizations on Aragon, the very simple ones. Uh, yeah, because we, we're working with them to uh, test out building, uh, you know, DAOs that have uh, civil mm -hmm. resistance gov gov governing systems. And, uh, well, you know, uh, one of the purpose of, of the technology that we're building is to give the ability to other networks, proof work and proof stake networks to add another civil resistant uh, layer to uh, their defenses. So it's like a hybrid between prove, you, you know, your existence and uniqueness and, you know, prove work is, you know, better than without uh, prove work or, you know, without proof of existence. So the hybrid should be even like uh, better defense um and uh, yeah um, we're already doing that so we're actually going to build to the vortex structure it's as it is laid out in the white paper so um initially of course we, we uh, have the system that uh um basically calculates the time as one has been running and the amount of proposals and voting okay. has he has uh, created uh yeah, sorry for interrupting. I have a question. It was uh, in my head for a long time because, but I forgot to ask it previously. Sure. Yeah, I know that the white paper says like what ninety-two percent or ninety-one percent of activity time here uh, from a node to be like one of the characteristic to be a validator. Yeah, it's 
something like that. I don't remember the correct one or two. Uh, how is it calculated? Uh, I mean, calculation by time. Is it daily calculated, weekly, monthly, or how it goes? Because what time are you referring to? Yeah, there's a time. Uh, there was maybe not in the white paper. Maybe some other said that. Uh, uh, to be yeah, there's, an active like, auditor, you should have like online time. of the node time. You know, you mean uptime? Yeah, uptime. Yeah, the uptime, like ninety-two percent mm. or something like that. And there was nothing said about the calculation because, like, what was interesting for me, like, if it's calculated mm. by day, <laughs> it's a bit uh, aggressive because, like. Maybe something happens and you go out from the system and like 8% of the day, it's a very small time to fix a server or if it's a hardware server or something like that. Local run. That's, the, that's the thing. That's the thing. And, you know, all the post runners face it as well. You think, you see that the necessities are uh, determined by the data that is conveyed around through the network and adding to... Um, um, the you know uh, the biometric layer is a very um, heavy, so to speak. Actually, um, because of of the issues with the limitations of trust com computation environment, it wasn't even in, in, pos really possible to pro put proper uh, biometric server SDK into a trusted comp you know environment and you know have it running because. Um, the size of the SDK was always much bigger than the trusted environment. And uh, mm -hmm. these limitations so like, were gone only like one year, year and a half ago. There was like a new tests and new breakthroughs in the field. So we got like ice lake, like uh, Intel SGX ice lakes like, uh, not so long ago. It was like boy, four months, five months. Uh, people ship them and I mean um, you know it, it's really a lot of data going back and forth because this is neural network process the biometric template and to make also like there's like search and matching separately where we match the template against one template in uh, the server and the other part is where we determine whether you're alive or not and liveness detection and data can be huge because it's like 70 computer vision models working simultaneously trying to understand whether uh, light perfectly bends on your skin or uh, like a lot of different uh, physical and even biochemical processes that it's trying to uh, capture and you have to compress this data encrypt it and uh, conveyed through the gossip layer between the nodes. So yeah, the time is required to be at a very high level. But you're actually blacklisted if you're out. You know, you have you have time downtime for 48 hours, or if we're even thinking about making it 72 hours. So. Okay, so it's just cumulative if you like. Started a node yeah. and turned it out, and for 70 hours, and whoop, go out. Okay, thanks. Because, That's yeah, yeah. Because that it's good. not going. It's it's not being going to be as a big hassle as uh, you know identifying yourself with the test net for like three day uh, straight. So like you'll be doing your biometric, uh, you know. Uh, uh, not more and it's basically you watching that your node has proper uptime on the background that's what really going to matter <laughs> so yeah yeah that answers your question yeah 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 totally. yeah thanks that was uh, a bit hard to figure out only by the hours you know uh, by the percentage so yeah that answers fully. And actually, actually, uh, we were also thinking about adding the hybrid uh, biometric system, not only uh, looking out 
the biometric template, but, but also utilizing the um, session system of the proof work networks to blacklist the equipment that was involved. And, you know, uh, it makes the life of uh, malicious actors and wannabe perpetrators much harder. Yeah, that would be great. Like, as much as possible, that would be cool. Yeah, one of our like, uh, one of our first uh, uh, partners, Akon, or, um, is going to utilize their own biometric slashing, right? Based on uh, human node uh, by off schemes, basically. And uh, they're going to choose themselves um, how they're going to slash their uh, like malicious actors. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, they will definitely know if this person tried to register once more and they will just not allow him to create double accounts to try and do some fraudulent activity online again. And I mean, it really changes your perspective about the service itself when you're engaging, you know, in such a civil resistant environment. Okay, so we have about uh, five more minutes here. We have time for uh, one or two more questions. Um, is there any other questions from our listeners today? Feel free to raise your hand. Hello? Mm, no questions, Sean. They, okay. They just listen and understand everything <laughs> perfectly. That's our community. Yeah. They don't need questions. <laughs> As, don't speak for everyone, but you know, yeah. time happens. You have uh, sometimes quite questions arrive and after a few days after the calls so yeah mm. they can always use the chat sure um and the last thing but you know not listing about biometric slashing is um, the privacy of the person that you're slashing and uh, um you know it's a very big concern because it would be better for the would it be better for the community to know the identity of the person that has done the perpetration, or we make it so that uh, you know the perpetrator is penalized, but his identity remains um, like private, and that is like another question that I wanted to ask you today. So, what do you think is the better approach if we find out that this malicious person? Uh, you know, is doing some bad thing. Do we make his identity public or we should uh, be remain private, but he still is penalized. And, you know, I wanted to hear your opinions about this. Well, if only I am speaking today <laughs> from the side of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say if if they ban him and ban him for good, we still should have like loyalty to his personal data. We are not like uh, planning to shame him out or something like that. So why to disclose it? I think a person will be banned and uh, after that the system is made, should be made in that way that he would not have a possibility to enroll again with the same <laughs> biometrics so nobody well, we know yeah yeah but uh, i'll add to it basically um government and every one of the you know uh, have this systems that contain biometric data about people and if someone has done perpetration somewhere 
uh, they, their identity goes into world back of identities and, you know, people can learn who you are and where you've been or what you're doing, stuff uh -huh. like this. No, easy, easy peasy. So if there was a malicious actor on your platform, you caught him, you can, do, you, you know, you can uh, warn other systems that haven't caught him yet. So you use your biometric, no, not you, but uh, some bad guy uses his uh, biometric to do something bad. On one marketplace, his biometric template goes to blacklist that is seen by other services and networks. Mm -hmm. They all blacklist him and they're safeguarded from his existence. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds really creepy if you think about it. <laughs> but, you know, it, um, isn't it better when you warn people or we just maintain his privacy so he can go and be a malicious actor somewhere else but not here that is like a very good like, question it can always be you know listed based based on severity right you know if you're just saying that um this person's downtime was you know over 20 percent and therefore he was blacklisted for 14 days you don't necessarily need to uh post the um the biometric hash but let's say if this person was trying to rob millions of dollars or is uh, caught trying to hack the system then you know it, it's kind of like yeah uh, you might as well uh, make the at least the biometric hash uh, well known. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like you know, uh, crimes in the real world. You don't necessarily get your identity uh, exposed for stealing a candy bar, but if you steal. Uh, Ten million dollars, the world knows of you. Okay. Okay. Oh. So yeah, from that point of, uh, that sounds much more better. I thought that we will discuss it like for the community, not for the uh, integrated cross uh, systems that will use uh, the same approach of the metric identification. So yeah, for that, it uh, sounds reasonable to prevent the malicious even, act in other systems. I mean, even if we don't have like some honeypot that uh, puts together biometric templates is, and is integrated into other systems, just by making biometric template public, other people can just, you know, take it and use it and check, check through it. That's yeah, it. we um, can make uh, some kind of a blackboard you know that, is, that sounds reasonable uh, yeah well that is maybe it should maybe. be accept, uh, accessible only for persons like you know uh, if we have like tens of systems that are integrated with the symbiometric uh, system and on the um administration level of those systems, they can access to some kind of a board with that black uh, listed data. Maybe that would be a bit better to better. Not, like hang it publicly for everybody, but just for the persons that can be involved, uh, not involved, uh, that are working or administrating the systems with this, uh, with the biometric identifications. That could be also used by that bad, pers bad person. Yep, it can. <laughs> okay, thank you, guys. Uh, I need to go, so thank you for the thank you for the yeah yeah thanks for being here. So uh, that I think you're almost at the one hour mark. It's, uh, Time to wrap it up. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Rahul, for being here. Uh, yeah. Always a pleasure talking with you around. <laughs>
and I, I wish you you guys would you know express your opinions more. Um, really interested to think it, um, and understand what you're thinking about the whole idea of uh, biometric selection and human organ as a whole. Yep. Thank you very much, and uh, I'd like to second uh, Dato there. Love it when uh, members of the community come up and talk and ask questions. And um, yeah, feel free to uh, speak up more, and um, it will help us uh, learn more and be able to bounce ideas around more. It's always uh, good to bounce thoughts and ideas against new walls. So. Anyway, thank you uh, once again. We'll be back in two weeks. And um, yeah, see you next time.